Here's another episode of 357 Magnum Ammo Test, and today what I have is the Barnes Vortex. Very cool ammunition. This is a full copper projectile, solid copper. It's rated at 1,265 feet per second. Very large hollow cavity. Um, the way they do these uh, projectiles is they um, basically pre-segment them on the inside so that they will expand because copper is very hard. So we're going to shoot it through the 4 inch barrel and through the 2 inch barrel and special thanks to um, Tim B for supplying this ammunition. Thank you. And we're going to go through the chronograph. Got a target behind that. We're going to see what kind of accuracy and velocity we're getting at the same time and then as always we're going to go through the juggernaut box which has four layers of denim followed by one and three quarter inches baloney followed by three eighths inch particle board to simulate uh, sternum or ribs and into water jugs. So let's get started with the test. All right, let's try it to the four inch barrel, see if we get that 1265 feet per second listed the lot. No read, good shot placement. Here's we have a dud round. Here's to be a light primer strike. And as we all know, 686 Smith & Wesson is a very strong, robust revolver. But we'll keep going with this. Twelve twenty-nine. 12.44. 1280. We'll run one more. 1265, that's the rate of velocity. So, I don't know what to think at this point. Now, let's see how it does to the two inch barrel. Right, let's see what we get to the two inch barrel for velocity and accuracy. No read. Eleven sixty one. Eleven sixty three. I think that read it. Eleven thirty five. Got to run a couple more. Interesting. Uh, sometimes we get that when we get a little bit too shiny of copper or something like that. But I'm going to take those numbers uh, for what they are. Uh, so we're going to run up through the uh, juggernaut box and see what kind of damage we get between the 2 inch and the 4 inch barrel. And by the way, the recoil was okay. It wasn't, it wasn't low, but it wasn't the most I ever felt. It was kind of pretty much average for a 357 Magnum. It's bearable, but a little any more than what it is would be unbearable. Let's see if we get to the 4 inch barrel with the Barnes Vortex ammunition. Alright, came right back at me. Flash pretty well. Shot placement, very, very good. Uh, so, this is an accurate round to the 4 inch barrel for sure. And here's the particle board. Uh, damage to the baloney is not really all that uh, impressive. I mean, I wouldn't want to get shot with it, but it's it's certainly not what we have seen with a lot of other ammunition. Uh, entrance, exit, looks about like a 45 ACP that didn't expand. Um, let's see what we got in water jugs. Now, jug one is exploded pretty good. Uh, that's pretty good damage. That's more than what I typically see. So what we're seeing off the bat is that if it's expanding, it's more of a controlled expansion. 
and in jug two, we are completely empty. Looks like jug three has an impact on the very bottom. And I can see the projectile in there. It looks like it cracked off the back of jug three, but did not pass through. And here we are, as expected, we got uh, those segments to flower out and expand. Very long for a caliber bullet because it's copper, not very dense. Now let's see what we got through the uh, two inch barrel when we hit that juggernaut box. All right, let's go through the juggernaut box with the two inch barrel with this ammunition and see what we get. here <laughs> all right and we cracked the particle board out the back and it actually looks like more damage to the two inch barrel than what we saw through the four inch barrel as far as you know we're removing a little bit more baloney there I'll see what we got in water jugs jug one has not as much damage as it did with the four inch barrel as to be expected uh, losing over 100 feet per second velocity. Jug 2, and we went clean through jug 2, standard hit. Jug 3, we went clean through jug 3. Jug 4, and we caught the projectile in jug 4. And very much like the other one, to the uh, four inch barrel, it's pretty similar. Looks like the pedals are pulled back a little bit more and we had a little bit more penetration as to be expected with a little bit less energy on that uh, hollow point. It's going to, you know, not expand it as large. However, being made out of copper, we thought we would think that we would see um, less peeling back. But we did get more penetration, which is typical for uh, traditional rounds so overall this ammunition well very accurate through the four inch barrel we had a failure to fire uh, getting a failure to fire in a 686 is not good it's not looking good because that's that's one of the premier firearms for testing ammunition um, so it looked like a light primer strike so possibly a rifle primer or something of that nature very accurate though. Uh, we didn't have those issues with the two inch barrel. Accuracy wasn't quite as good. Uh, had a little bit of issues with the chronograph. Overall, uh, recoil was right in the middle here. Right in the middle. So what I'm seeing here is we definitely have a failure because we're, we're not getting uh, a reliable ignition. That's, that's not a good thing at all. Um, but we take that out of the equation. We had right in the middle as far as recoil right in the middle as far as damage and penetration in the water jug. So it performed basically mediocre. It was okay, but if this stuff's very expensive, I really wouldn't personally purchase it unless you had a specific reason for it, like you can't use lead or you want a little bit more hard barrier penetration because I do think it would penetrate a little bit further through hard barriers than traditional lead uh, jacketed rounds. So that's what you get today with the Barnes ammunition and full copper round. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.